I think in the um, part of the decision to send us, we are young, and Dr. Mike Naftali has uh, 30 years of experience, and he has it, a staff with him, is the understanding that the world belongs to the young. And hopefully, this passion and energy and the willing to go to the end and to do anything, and like you said, to, to be myself, but to cooperate with others, not to compromise, not to just like be a half of yourself. The understanding that we wanna change this, like this dialogue, that one across the other, by something that goes together, movement, like, by movement, by moving, by listening, by, by, by arts. This thing, as dreamy as it sounds, well, it works. And uh, I did. We were talking at the beginning of the conference, um, and I was like, amazing. You're from Egypt. I love Egypt. It's my dream to go there. We have to sit down. We have to talk. We have to do this thing together. We have to have like students from Egypt in this international school. This will bring peace for my like, perspective. And you were One saying, and you were saying, you are nice, but it's going to be very, very difficult. Those were the words that I started the conference with. And we said, we're going to make it happen. Yeah. We said, OK, it's going to be hard. We're not afraid from hard work. We didn't say it's going <coughs> to chick jack, but It's part of the process. But if we are all going to be together and making our wor words, like walking the talk, yeah. we were saying that it has to be a new phrase. Walk your talk. Don't walk your walk and talk your talk. Yeah. If we are gonna, if we can walk the talk, just the two of us, just between us, I think we can do it. So you didn't answer my question. I didn't? Oh, I'm so <laughs> politics. No, no. <laughs> it's not important for me. I know the it's answer. Im it's important. It's important for the other people. I think I kind of, I, kinda, I wanted to say that. how, or you should, so yes, to say, yes, yes. Or, and how do you do that? Explain to the audience what do you mean to Jewish culture? Actually, to uh, to expand your explanation, Tikkun that Olam. It's a global, that it's a global project. It's yes. not a Jewish project. It's not an Israeli project. It's a global, not mixed with peace and dialogue and so on. But okay. To speak about humanitarian and to let everyone feel that it's their project. It's not your project. It's not a Jewish project. It's not the Israeli project. It's Tikkun it kind Olam. Of feel, it's kind, it, I it kind was, of was feeling like that. I'm sitting here. And yeah, but we're Israelis. I know, no, I'm asking, is it like, sound like I putting agree. away or something? Okay. Yes. yes. Okay. So, so that's like, I, have, really I think I have an answer. Okay. I think I might have an answer. Um, like I said, for me, the, what I associate Judaism with and what it means to be Jewish is to repair the world. And that is something that every religion shares. And I think that for the world to understand that that is what it means to be Jewish for me, is to give back to our global society, um, is very important and very valuable and something that everyone should know. And um, for example, my, the Jewish community in Toronto, my rabbi, is now working with me to plan um, a volunteer mission, a tikkun olam mission to East Africa to work with all the communities that I've worked with because it needs to be done. And it's not just about Israel and just about Jews. It's about yeah. our world and our global community. Yeah. Does that sort of answer your question? Why don't we we'll give maybe the final questions here, because we're, as always, running a little bit late, and then we can kind of try to make progress on the answer. Yeah. Yes. At first, I want to compliment your courage. It needs guts to say this and to even to try to implement I'm working since 20 years in bridging religious conflicts, which are obviously officially not exist, but in practice they are. So I would not advise you to show here Jewish culture, because it's other culture, and you respect all the cultures, 
And there is no one culture worthwhile to be popped out, because otherwise I insist on my Christian culture, uh, Buddhism culture, Shintoism culture, and whatever, and Islamic culture. So if you want to show, and if you want to invite the world, the most important and most challenging act is you have to define yourself at first what are the words, what are the phrases you need to use to give this impression to others? Because the world, I don't know how many continents you visited, how many countries you visited, I tell you, it's... How many I'm allowed to? Uh, you see, uh, let me say, we had Delphi Games in Malaysia. And I was not aware that so much I knew but I was not so much aware when they bid for the Delphi Games that we entered the first time an Islamic country. An Islamic country. And when it came down, finally, to inviting the teams, I recognized the Israel team and the Palestinians are not allowed to enter or to participate. And I was in charge for this from the organization. And we had to convince the Foreign Affairs Ministry to allow this to happen. And they said, well, five years ago, the Israeli to our prime minister did this insult and this insult and this insult. And we are not permitted, and Jewish people are not permitted, they can come as tourists, but as an official, representing their country, it's not permitted. I tell you, I had sweat on my forehead, and I remembered, I will remember that the rest of my life, to be very precise at the beginning. Because you can almost sort out everything if you start in advance with the right terms. And sometimes, if you leave it up to the audience to raise questions or not to, you're dead. And in particular, this is the first remark, and if you want to have advice, I'm happy to help and to assist. I this, appreciate it. This is a learning experience. And the second and is, do you know, Moose, that this is in Europe a highly admired organization? Have you ever heard about yes. Yehudi Menuhin? Have you ever heard about Yehudi Menuhin, no. Lord Menuhin? He, is, he was one of the famous um, violinists and musicians of Europe. He is dead. And he initiated at first a foundation with his name, and second he created a project which is called Muse. And this became the largest school for children and states within Germany, for example, took this and carried it out. And he is internationally, uh, or this school that has its headquarters, as far as I know, in Brussels. And I would advise you to get in touch with them. If you could f meet their requirements yeah. by distinguished uh, mm, behavior by the skill and everything else, work together. Don't line up a parallel road. Yeah. Stick together. Invite and insist Collaborate. not on making your own moves. So please take this as a little advice. Thank you. Thank you. I, we, this is the exact thing we want to do. We want to collaborate and to, because of that we also want to create a platform that will be international, that won't have this even talk because it will be international by definition. The fact that we're all going to be a part of it from all countries uh, will just, it, it doesn't make it like anything um, specific. I agree. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You keep inspiring more and more flurries of questions. I think you were next on it, I think let's make this the final question, though, just because an added respect for our next speaker, I don't want to go too late. Yeah. Um, so I, I'd like to um, respectfully disagree um, and, and tell you to stick to your guns. Um, and here's why. Uh, as a as a student, um, I was I founded the 
um, first the Interfaith Forum and then the Interfaith Council for my uh, school and then became their first uh, person to be hired by the school as, a, uh, as the director of um, contemplative and spiritual life. And one of our mission statements for, for building a religious life on a campus that was actually um, just the year before had been rated as the, uh, I think it was called the number one most godless campus in America. Um, as a school that had literally no, uh, no religious interaction whatsoever. There was no presence from any, any group. Um, and then when I got there, it was when the first Muslim students were getting there. Um, and I've discovered that college campuses tend to become, um, the introduction of, of Muslim students really helps to improve on the religious life on a campus. Um, so we were just starting to develop this religious life there. And um, one, of the, one of the core facts of our mission statement was that we were um, never religious neutral. We never, um, we never put anything out of the table. We never hit anything just because we wanted to include everybody. We wanted to include everybody. So we were religious um, diverse and we were religious rich. Um, to say that it comes from a, from a Jewish cultural mindset is a great thing to say um, because you're coming from a very positive aspect and representing a very positive aspect of the Jewish religion. Um, I consider myself a very religious Jew despite the fact that I don't wear a kippah, um, I don't have peyot, I don't wear tzitzit or anything. And it's Shabbat now. And it's Shabbat and I'm using the <laughs> So despite all of that, I consider myself a very religious Jew because I dab in shachri and mincha and mariv and I do all of my, you know, all of my, all of my own personal practices and, and whatever uh, it may be. Um, the reason why I don't do these things with the kippah and the not using the microphone and Shabbat and everything is because there is too often a negative um, especially from our, our, our respectful brothers and sisters in the Haredi community in Israel, um, there's this negative outlook on the religious aspect of Judaism. Um, what you're trying to do, uh, promoting the concept of tikkun olam, which yes, you do need to do a better job of explaining it from the start uh, in a very positive light. Yes, that, that, needs, to, that needs to come out more. Um, but promoting it as this is coming from our Jewish background. That's why we're doing it. Because we were taught as Jews to, to fix any wrongs in the world, to help those who are disenfranchised, to, um, to repair those, those broken vessels. That's what Tikkun Olam comes from, is this idea of the broken vessels of light throughout the world, to bring them back together and to re restore that light to the world for all people, no matter what religion they are, no matter what culture they come from, no matter what language they speak. Um, that is a great thing to represent. And stick to your guns and do it. I think all religious share that. Yeah. As a, as a part of, we will have a mitai. Don't worry about it. We will have a mitai. <laughs> and that I think is an important component. But it's the way I think with both of, what both of you are sort of trying to say is the way that we present it to write Jewish culture or to say this is what Judaism means to me. And it's not even necessary that because don't need to uh, say your, your inner feelings are uh, highly respected. And it's yours. What I mean, if you promote the project, and you refer to culture, and yeah. um, it is better not to give to too early well. your inner beliefs, because in respect for the beliefs of others, wanted to come and be open and curious if you say, it is enough if you say it's an Israel. Everyone yes. would say, oh, gee whiz, it's not Paris. <laughs> it's Israel. And then the second question, is this in the occupied area? <coughs> is it in, or is it in the so-called home, home original land of Israel? Home original. Uh, yeah, but it's, it's home original. Yeah, it's, uh, and, and so uh, these are the thoughts um, popped in my mind at once. Uh, how many battlefields I enter regardless if they are in mind or in fact. I, I just see the tragedy within Israel. I see that olive trees needing hundreds of years to grow are chopped because a wall needs to be, and I'm trained in walls living in Berlin, being born here. So if I see this, it, it, it takes my breath. But it takes more the breath of the people that got bombed because we didn't have the wall. I'm sorry, I have to say that. So. Everyone likes uh, olive trees. <laughs> but if your families were bombed every day uh, by the, people the, that are coming 
Let me jump in at this point, just because I think uh, <laughs> what you, what's good, though, is I think you have now three good advisors. So I would suggest that we do a workshop afterwards, take all their advice, and I think the fact that their there disagreement are, is good. Sorry, yes. uh, and I think they're taking all that feedback and can really, in the end, say, uh, make up your own minds. But I think can it's I just good say a uh, last sentence? Sure, of course. I'm, uh, well, I'm not religious, and uh, it's very interesting that it got to this thing, because I think, like in art, wherever there is a tension, if people like or hate a work of art, it still makes it good. And that's, uh, instead of like being like, okay, that's fine. And um, I, uh, we will think about all of that. And I do, uh, again, want to invite everyone to be in contact with us. And uh, thank you very, very, very much. Good. Thank you again very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.